Now, if we do have to hand tap something, it's best to grab a taper tap. The reason for this is that it self aligns really easily on the hole. It straightens itself out. If you try and hand tap something right off the bat with a, with a bottoming chamfer tap, you're gonna have a hard time with alignment. This thing does not wanna stay straight. So if hand tapping, grab yourself at least a plug chamfer tap and best case, taper tap. Now, if you do have to go to the bottom of a blind hole, start off with a plug tap or a taper tap and you'll work your way down to the bottoming tap. You can actually follow up the one tap with the other. Now we've talked about taps and why we'd choose one over another, but as an NC G-Code programmer, I need to know what tap I'm gonna use before I write my program. It's important. Now, look at these bolts. These three tapped holes all used the exact same G-Code program. They were all programmed using a G84 to Z minus one inch deep. But when I go to put the bolts in them, you can tell that some bolts are going in farther than others. So why are the heads of the bolts sticking out at different heights? Well, we use different taps, different chamfers on the taps. So we're not getting the full thread at the same point. This guy was created using a taper chamfer tap. This one was created using a plug tap. And here, this one was made with a bottoming tap. So if you're using a plug tap, you have to account for that extra five threads worth of pitch. You've got to program five threads deeper if you want to get to that full diameter. Just something you should keep in mind. We talked about cut taps today, and some of you are wondering why we didn't mention form taps. Well, form taps are amazing. They are used on ductile materials that can be crushed or have the, the threads formed into them. But there's so much that can be said about them that we thought they deserved their own video. But what we do have for you is a few tips that you can use if you're running into problems while tapping. Make sure your coolant concentration isn't low. Taps like higher coolant concentrations. Keeping your P-Cool properly set, or even going with a TSC through spindle coolant tap will extend tool life as well. Check your program. We've made videos on how to calculate those tapping feed rates. And we'll wanna make sure that we're running the correct tap drill diameter. Now, you can find this in the machinery's handbook. And remember, there is a range of drill sizes that you can use for any size tap. Use that to your advantage. Sometimes going with a larger diameter drill can make things easier on your tap while still keeping you within our spec. And always check your drill depths, accounting for the angles on those drills and your taps. Some taps are pointier than others, it's just the way they were ground, so you have to think about that before you run them. Now for your drills, a standard 118 degree included angle drill, you can just multiply the diameter times 0.3 and that's gonna give you that, that point length. And finally, talk to your tool reps. These guys know more about tapping than we ever will. Uh, one thing I will mention is that if you're tapping on aluminum, you'll probably wanna go with a bright finish tap, a nice polished, shiny surface, so the aluminum won't stick to it and gall. And we'll save the, the black oxide finishes for ferrous materials. The next time you pick up a tap, Think snow plow. Just by looking at that cutting tip, you're gonna be able to tell if the chips are gonna be pushed into the hole or drawn out of it. Now, I wanna mention that the names of the taps that we use today are kind of um, all based in the US, right? Plug tap, bottoming tap, that's universal, taper tap, uh, but they might be called something different where, where you're working, uh, in the UK or in Germany or Japan. Leave us a comment and tell us what these taps are called where you're at. I, I'd love to read them. Well, thanks for letting us be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.